Today, our champion, Tom Surratt of North Billerica, faces the challenge of Jack Sanek of Dorchester on Hamilton Bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Hamilton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and just about everybody knows by now that this program is on videotape. We do our taping right here at Sammy White's Brighton Bowl, and we do it sometimes several weeks before you actually see the telecast. It's always three strings of cattle pin bowling, and it is total pinfall which will determine our winner. His tangible souvenir will be a marble-based trophy from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. The runner-up receives a smaller but otherwise identical version, indicating he was a participant on our show. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,150. $700 goes to the winner, $300 goes to the runner-up, $50 to the winner of each string, and should they tie, they would split it at $25 apiece. A $100 bonus for anybody who gets a $400. In my hand, I have this certificate from True Value Hardware Store that goes to the marksman of the day, a $50 gift certificate to the man who has the most marked. There are other opportunities for money. We'll tell you more about that, but right now, let's meet today's bowler, shall we? This big tall guy here uh, has a name that's very familiar, Sanek. His father was on here many years ago, and uh, it was, let's see, uh, he had three strikes in a row when you were how old? Eight months. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh, does that make me feel old? <laughs> I want to tell you. And I'm sure that uh, I remember here a couple of times when your dad was bowling and you were in the background when you were a teenager and you were so nervous you could hardly stand still. Now it's his turn to be nervous. It's Our, easier up here. You think it's easier Let here? Let him go through the suffering now. Okay, now. Uh, Tom Surrett, your, your, your brother Peter was on our show and won, and then he moved himself into our True Value Championship. You have another opportunity. At least you got by the first one, right? Yeah. Well, he did. He had a 703. Remember now, that's a five string roll off. So that's 203 bonus pins. Oh, missed the spare leave. Young Jack is a management accountant. Okay, Jack getting ready to roll his second. He's representing the Orleans Bolodrome today. All right, now he has a single pin, which is the two to pick up for a spare. Jack is unmarried, and as I mentioned, is a management accountant. And his dad, as we mentioned, is here and sweating it out in the background. Oh! So he has missed two spare leaves. And it's a, a nine. Now here's our defending champion, Tom Surrett who won his title last week, defeating Owen Martin. There is a single pin. Now let's see what Tom Surrett does with a single pin. Made it. Okay, so there is the first mark. Tom's league average, 123, high single, 192, high triple, 464. He had a 663 in winning his roll off. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, has had to do a little repair work down at uh, lane 37 where a couple of extra pins tumble down into uh, the gutter. It's all set now. Half Worcester left. Just two, that's the fill. Tom is a production scheduler for H.P. Hood. He's representing the Candlewood Lanes. He's married and have two children. They happen to be right down in front of me here. That's his son, Jeff, almost three and uh, he just left, <laughs> and daughter Kristen. Nine. All right, Jack Sanek now moving to lane 38. Today's challenger. 
All right, here's another spare lead. He made that one. Okay, that was his third successive spare leave, and he was not about to let that one go by. Five is the fill, and he's got four horsemen left side, plus the nine pin. Not an easy one. Now Tom Surratt. It is a strike. knew as soon as he released it that he wasn't going to make it two strikes in a row. As most of you know, three strikes in a row on this show is worth an extra bonus of $1,000. That's three strikes in a row in the same string. And each subsequent consecutive strike in that same string would be worth $1,000 a piece following that. So as usual, we pause after four here in the opening string and take a check on that scoreboard. And as both bowlers look at it, so do we. Our challenger, Jack Sanek, after 4, 43. And our defending champion, Tom Surrett, 51 with a bonus ball to roll. Challenger, Jack Sanek. Six pins on the left. And he's bouncing it off the football line a little bit. So now he's going to have to try. And so it's just a six box. There's uh, Dad right there pacing around, Mike Sanek. There's Dad. <laughs> and uh, as Jack said, it's his turn to be nervous. Chance for bonus money, as you can see. Three marks in a row, any combination of strikes or spares in the same string establishes a bonus of $50, and each subsequent consecutive mark in that same string, $50 a piece. So right now, Tom Surratt has a drop of nine on his spare and a single to pick up here for $50 in bonus money. And yes, he's right on. So that's it, $50 in bonus money has been established. Missed the head pin. Four horsemen left side plus the nine pin, tough, tough spare leave. Oh, everything but number one. I had a letter from somebody who said, why do I why do I get bent out of shape when people miss spares? I don't know. I just I have empathy for them. I wish I could make them. <laughs> Jack Sanek and I'd like every one of them to roll 200. Boy, that's a tough one when you've got back to back. It's tough except when they're all set up and you have just made a spare and that's your first ball that you're throwing and then it seems easy to punch them out for a half Worcester. 
Also, if somebody want to know what is a lob, well, the lob line is a down about, oh, I'd say probably uh, 10 feet down, maybe or so down the lane from the foot foul line. I don't ex have the exact statistics. I'd have to look it up in the book. And that's where Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, sits. And the ball has to make contact with the lane anywhere from the time the bowler delivers it. And that includes on the um, approach before the foot foul line. And it has to make contact with the lane before the lob line. If it doesn't make contact till it goes over the lob line, then a lob is called, and anything that that ball knocks down does not count. Okay? Keith Williams keeping score on the big scoreboard today, and Bruce Goldman keeping score beside me. Tom Surrett. There's uh, right on the lob line is Ralph Stewart. He is our lob line judge and referee watching for the proper delivery and to see that everything else is uh, performed according to the rules. I won't say according to Hoyle because somebody will say, what does that mean? And I couldn't explain it right now. <laughs> Except he was a rule maker somewhere, I think for bridge or whist or something, I don't know. <laughs> I know it's not our technician, Cal Hoyle, anyway. Is it a strike? No, the seven is still there. Single pin, the seven for spare, yes. Okay, that puts him at 104 with a bonus ball to roll, and challenger Jack Sanek is at 87. Oh, he wanted one of those two to go down, either the seven or the ten. One piece of wood. He will try to use that, try to make it slam into the piece of wood on his left and hope for some sidewall action, but he didn't get it. Nine. Ninety-six. Three pins remaining, but they are separated. So he's going to have to go over. Well, he tried on the left to try to kick the four over to the right, but no such luck. So it's a nine, and he has to settle for what I'm sure is a very unsatisfactory for him, 105. And Tom Surrett will win this string since he's already at 104. And we'll pick up another $50 in bonus money. Two as he punches out the one and five. He almost made a spare out of that. nine 115 league average 123 and uh, Jack Sanix average 125 so his 105 is disappointing for him that's tough he's got the eight pin and the ten pin and the wood is up against the ten he will probably try to bounce it off the sidewall and see what he can do. He got the sidewall, but he didn't get the action. It went into the pit instead. One twenty-four, one pin better than his league average. But he had three marks in a row, and he also won uh, the first string, so he has $100 in bonus money, and that's the only bonus money we've given away so far in the first string. As the two young bowlers, who know each other well, are sitting side by side, 
And we tilt up and look at the scoreboard, and at the end of one, it is defending champion Tom Surrett of North Villarica, 124, and challenger Jack Sanek of Dorchester, 105. This is the middle string. That means our defending champion leads off. He's Tom Surrett of North Villarica. Although a lot of folks remember him from North Reading. Tom's brother, Peter, was on earlier, as you know, and uh, rolled himself a 4-14, which at the moment is in third place for our late summer $20,000 True Value Live Championship Show, first prize $10,000. Fred Spintig's 447 puts him in the lead. Danny Murphy's 438 in second. Peter Surrett's 414 in third. Paul Berger's 407 fourth. And Jim Powers 401 is fifth. If there were to be need for an alternate, if any of them, of those five, any of those five, if were to remain the same and any of those five were unable to make it, then the alternate would be Owen Martin, who had rolled a 399. As we well know, there are several more weeks to go before that time. All right, here's our challenger today from Dorchester, young Jack Sanek. And in case you're tuning in late, yes, he is Mike Sanek's son. Half Worcester left. Three, six on the right and the four. Let's see if he can move it. Good hit as he took the two on the right, but couldn't get across to get the four. I've often said we deeply appreciate all you folks sending in mail, and there's been a great deal of mail about the Boston pins, and we pretty much uh, have put that aside. But there are other things that people come in writing about. Tom, now look at that, one pin. There's the challenge of this game. What other game can you go down there and throw a ball and just miss the head pin and have the ball go through and take out only one pin? That's what makes this so frustrating and, and so fascinating. Seven. I have a letter here saying, I know you have mentioned time and again many of the old Candlepin leagues in New England and the greater Boston area. I'd like to put in a plug for my own league. It's the Quincy Church League. This is our 70th consecutive year. We don't have any of the charter members now bowling. I wouldn't think so, but I do have a few old timers. There is the spread eagle. <laughs> so easy to make, no strain at all, unless you're trying to make it for money. One, George Roberts, who won't mention his age, has been with the league 58 years, and he has a 103 average. Not bad, I guess not bad. Keep up the good work. Thanks to Clarence Snook. How about that? He's been in the league for 58 years, and he still has a 103 average? Wow, congratulations. Okay, here's Jack Sanek. Four horsemen left side and the nine pin. Tough shot. Nope. I got a kick out of this uh, letter. And uh, let's see, it uh, comes to me from um, 
Abe Rockwood in, in Needham. He said, during the summer of 1941, the Army conducted large-scale maneuvers in the Lake Charles area of Louisiana. Hey, how about that? A strike. I'll get back to the letter after we take a check on the scoreboard, which is at the end of four here in the second string. And at that time right now, as, you, as we told you, Tom Surrett led 124-105. Right now, it is Surrett 35 and Sanek 37 with two bonus balls to row. Okay, here is our defending champion, Tom Surrett, on the line. Let's see what he does here. That's a toughie. Okay, getting back to the letter. During the summer of 1941, the Army conducted large-scale maneuvers in the Lake Charles area, Louisiana, and between problems, the, participa the participants... How oh, is it going to go? Nope. Went on uh, their uh, passes over to Alexandria, the nearest large city, and at that time there were many northerners or Yankees in the units training in the south, so one enterprising bowling alley proprietor imported what he called Boston pins to take care of that market. Well, the Boston pins turned out to be candle pins, and because of the way they fly when they hit the local pin boys down in Louisiana, and the owner refused to leave the deadwood in place because they were gonna get hurt, in spite of being told over and over again that it was in the rules of candle pin bowling. We have a strike. Yes. So needless to say, the deadwood shooters didn't do too well, and everyone's scores were much lower. To those who had never bowled candle pins with wood, didn't matter. But those that had were disappointed. Thanks, Abe. That's an interesting little anecdote about what happened in the summer of, or the year of 1941, down in Louisiana. Okay, here's Jack Sanek. He has a strike up on the board. Nope, not two. That's the first ball. And the second. So the total fill is seven. And nine in the box. So right now at the halfway point, he has picked up eight of the 19 pins that he was trailing by. That's a tough split, I want to tell you. Those pins are parallel, the four and six. So these object pin is the two. Nope, didn't quite get it. Oh, pretty shot. It's for a 10, but if he had done that when the four was there, it would have been a very, very pretty spare. Got a break. It looked like it was going to be a spread eagle. There's a crisp spare. So he has double marks and a chance now for some bonus money. That ball got away from him. Got seven. He couldn't believe that he dropped that ball so soon that it was going to go to the right and miss the head pin. Actually, he made out a lot better than he deserved, and he knows it. So, no spare. Nine. Now our challenger, Jack Sanek, he has six boxes to go here in the second string. And he has dropped now to 21 behind. Boy, he wanted that seven to go, but it didn't. So he's got six, 10, and wood over here. What a great try. He played it off the sidewall, but it didn't go. I guess I do get bent out of shape when they miss them, don't I? Huh? But I really want them to make them.
Four horsemen right side. That's what he has left. Oh! Six pins still there. Nine. He cannot afford that because those two marks that were picked up by uh, Tom Surratt has given him a 29 pin lead. Oh, he thought he had a strike. Everybody else did too. He started to walk away and then looked back and there was the 10 still standing. Plus whatever he gets on the next one. Two. Half Worcester left. Now he's got to try to do the best he can. He's going to try to, I presume, work off that head pin and try to make it take three of them. Okay, he did get three of the five. Not the same three that I thought he would take, but nor himself. A 111. And as I told you, his league average is 123. Jack Sanek, today's challenger. Oh, that seven would not go down. Okay, he's got the six pin and the seven. He's got two pieces of wood in between. He obviously, he has to hit the six, drive that piece of wood over to try to get the seven. Let's see if he can do it. Yes. All right. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Nice, nice spare. Eight, and a chance for another. One and three to pick up for a spare. Oh, that hurt. That one hurt. One oh nine, and so the fifty dollars for winning the uh, middle string goes to Tom Surrett. He has all the bonus money so far. Jack Sanek still looking for some. As Surrett won the first one, 124, 105. The second one, 111, 109. Third string, here's our challenger, Jack Sanek, on the line. All right, that's a, a good start anyway. Oh, wait a minute, look at that piece of wood. Oh, that is so dangerous because, well, let's watch. Let's see if he can drive through it. He did. All right. That had to be played just right. And he deserves the applause because it is so easy in an instance like that, because that, that, that pin was so far forward that it could have, be dri could have been driven into the gutter and the ball deflected and the seven would have been still standing. The other alternative would have been for him to put the ball in the gutter, and he didn't. Okay, big nine, and a chance for another with a piece of wood right across in front of the nine. All right, he has two spares to start off the third string. 21 pin lead for our defending champion going into the third string. And his challenger has just thrown a pair of spares at him. He was not happy with that. As soon as he let it go, he turned around in disgust. It's an eight box. 
So right away, Jack Sanek picks up 11 of those 21 pins, and the lead is down to 10. Almost a spread eagle. Three pins on the right, the two pin alone on the left, and the three, six, ten. He tried to, he tried to play the piece of wood that was in the back, hoping that it would, the ball would hit the three and the pin would spin back and get the two. And it didn't work. All right, ten pins, and now let's see what. Jack Sanek, our challenger, can do. It's a big hit, big eight. And is it going to be another? No, he just missed what would have been $50 in bonus money as he had two pins side by side. Every pin counting. Too bad he missed bonus money there because it was a legitimate spare leave. Three, six, ten on the right, seven pin alone over on the left, and one piece of wood that hasn't decided what it's going to do. I guess it's going to stay. Boy, he made a nice try at that. He crisply took out the 3610, but didn't get any action to go over and get the wood or the seven. The 10. Tom Surratt. One pin. All right, he has a spare leave right now with the one, two, four. Didn't get it. H. Jack Sanek has taken the lead. Jack Sanek in the lead by a pin. Tom Surrett winds up with a 7-10 split. Piece of wood in the middle, at a, but it's in too deep. There isn't enough of an angle. It's in too deep to utilize it, I'm quite sure. He tried to bang it off the sidewall and hope that he could get that piece of wood to carry across, but no way. Ten. Okay, it's a one-pin lead, boys and girls, right now for this man, our challenger, Jack Sanek. Half Worcester left. At least he was not using it as a fill on a spare. Ooh, now the pressure is on with this third ball. Good out, good out. Considering that he punched out two and then went right down that lane, it was a pretty good out. One more single pin to pick up right now for a spare. That's the three pin. Yeah. Made it. Both of these bowlers are known for being skip lobbers. In fact, we were talking about it before the show and, and how much they both do it. Tom Surratt has a spare lead. Oh. 
No, he didn't get it. All right, that puts him back in the lead by one. Tom Surratt leads by one now. And uh, we have five boxes to go. He's opposite a spare. So close to a strike, but he has the seven pin to pick up for a spare to match the spare by his challenger, Jack Sanek. And he got it. Okay, boys and girls, hang on to those tray tables. Here we go. One pin separating our bowlers right now. And oh, he wanted that four pin to go, but it didn't. Great try. Took out the three six, but couldn't quite get over there enough to get that four pin. Every pin counts. It's a 10 box. Right onto the head pin. Look at that. And he leaves the five and he take to took out the one and the eight and the nine. But the five's still there. Boy, I'll tell you, he's got to try his best now to make an eight out of this. All right, it's an eight. Here's Tom Surratt, our defending champion. He leads the match by one in completed frames right there where it says 65-45 because he had a 21-pin lead coming into this third string. He's opposite a fill of seven. He gets six, so that's tie right now. We're tied. Tied up at the moment. He's opposite a 10. Sanek by two right now. But he's opposite an eight. He gets a 10 and we're tied again. He got the 10 all right, he got a strike. So pending what he gets on the next two balls to break that, they uh, are literally tied, but not really because of the, because of the strike. Okay, Jack Sanek now has the one, three, seven, ten. And made it! Oh, what a beautiful spare. Oh, what a beautiful spare he made. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. He got seven for a fill, but it's going to be awful tough to try to make this. Three, six. Nope. All right. One more pin. That's what he's going to try to put up there for. All right, he gets a nine, and that gives him a 126. Tom needs a 105 for a tie. First ball gets him seven, and he has a chance now to make another mark. All right, eight is the fill, but he will not have a mark here. Nine. 96. 
He needs 10 to win, 9 to tie. Oh boy, look at that, huh? He needs a 105 for a tie, a 106 wins it. He needs 10 to win. All right, three pins standing, nine ties it, 10 wins it. He needs one more pin, one more pin to tie. If he gets them both, he wins. One pin to tie, two to win. We go into a two box roll off. We are tied at, we are tied at 340 and we'll have a two box roll off. And if we're tied after that, we'll have another two box roll off. All right, here is Jack now. Two full on the head pin. A little too far to the right. Oh, a six in his first box. Tough, I'll tell you. I don't know what he can do with it. No, it didn't go. Boy, he made a good effort. A fraction of an inch further to the left, and that might have been a spare. All right. 15 pins. So Tom Surrett needs 16 pins to win. There are eight of them right there. Has to wait for that wood. And it's gonna roll away. All right, he's got his can in it, which he needs just six more pins, and uh, obviously it's going to be a double score here because it's counting in both of the boxes. So if he rolls a, th if he rolls a three right now, he wins. Okay, he has one. He's going to finish the box, so we'll know what the final total will be. Twenty-five to fifteen in the uh, roll-off. And so Tom Surrett has successfully defended his title in a two-box roll-off against his challenger, Jack Sennock. And the final totals up on the board will be Tom Surrett, 365, and Jack Sennock, 355. When we have a tie, the home viewer has two chances. The original three string total, which was the tie, that's 680, and 10 pins either side of that. Or after we had had the uh, two box roll off, and that came a total of 720, so we have 10 pins either side of that. You're gonna get two chances. But anyway, when I draw a card, that person will receive these prizes. A Regina electric broom. No more vacuuming from now on. It's the Regina electric broom. The lightweight, easy way to make cleaning a breeze. Regina electric broom makes a perfect gift. And Wilkinson self-sharpening knife set. Stainless steel sharpens itself every time it's removed from its protective case. Wilkinson sword self-sharpening knife. It can become your favorite knife. And you'll fill your reel with premium quality Stren fishing line. Strong, easy handling, smooth casting. Great fishing starts with Stren.
Okay, two chances. Oh, one of my trophies just went over as I knocked this down. Well, we'll pick that up. Okay, now what we're trying to do right now is find if we have somebody who is going to have an opportunity to be either near 680 or 720. And uh, it is uh, Julia Rice Church Street, Wilkinson, Massachusetts. Nowhere near 680, but 715 is right on the nose for $100, okay? And we'll start all over again next week. 450 down there, Tom. And I hope I didn't break your trophy. No! Okay, Jack, take a try at it. No! Okay, Jack, stay here and Tom right behind us. We're a little uh, late, as they say, and have to run along. I can't give you any bonus money at all. And all that hard work and the tie and everything, just, just 300 dollars. Listen, first time, you'll be back. You're young, and uh, I'll be glad to see you again, OK? All right, Tommy, you get the $700 plus $150 in bonus money, and you also get a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Store. And those are tough, those ace trophies. Look at that. <laughs> Didn't even break when I knocked.